Today I'm going to teach you about Smart Exchange so that you can find some awesome lessons to use on your smart board in your classrooms. The first thing you want to do is either sign in if you already have an account or join for free. Joining is very simple. All it needs is your email ad address and your passwords. And then you go to agree and continue and it creates your account. I registered with my center account and I didn't have any problems um, with the email coming through. Or if you already have an account, you come here and you type in your email and your password and you can say keep me signed in, which is what I've done. So then you don't have to keep typing in your password. And then let the fun begin. The one way that you can find neat resources is just by going to the top downloads or just by browsing. If I want to find a game, this is often how I, I would browse because here if you go to teacher recommended, you can find all sorts of neat games that you can do. This one I thought would be particularly fun at the elementary level because once you, you open it, you can look and you can see some examples. And the way this one works is you throw a koosh ball or something soft at the board and um, if you hit one, it gives you a question that the students can answer and all you have to do is add your own um, questions and your own answers so that the students can maybe review for a test or something like that. So a fun, motivating way to get kids interested in your your game. And you can see here it shows you like all the different grade levels it could be and it gives you a little short description. And so if you want it, all you have to do is click download and that will pop up down here to the bottom of your screen and then I could open that and, and just edit it to be my own um, lesson. If you want to find something more specific, you can do a search. So let's say, for example, I'm an art teacher, so I'm going to be teaching a lesson about symmetry. I would type symmetry here, and it would bring up all sorts of lessons about symmetry. Now, I only teach symmetry to fourth, um, third, fourth, and fifth grade, and um, say I only want one that's about art because I'm going to get a lot about symmetry about math here. So I could click art and design and that would filter out art and design. Let's say I specifically want to do third grade. I could click that and it would give me third grade. And if I wanted to have a, something specific to the United States, I could choose United States or not. And then I can look at these and I can see, hmm, what are they? Here it's talking about line of symmetry and I can look at some examples and it looks like this one is mostly just graphics showing um, symmetry so maybe I'm not interested in that one but maybe something like this is better and you can just kind of browse and look and see what different things are available for you. The other way that I can find lessons is to go here to standard aligned which I think is pretty cool and you click here and I can start by going to say the Missouri uh, grade level expectations is what we use um, for art at least at the elementary level and here you select your grade so let's say I wanted to do first grade and then here I'm visual arts so I would click visual arts and then I click view so you can see that all of these ones nobody's made any resources but as I get down to here to elements and principles I could find here one about color about patterns about properties of color and so I can look at this and it might have um, it's got a lesson that goes all through the different kinds of colors, hue, intensity, value. Uh, here it looks like it's a game where you can erase a color and see a concept. I can do a matching game where they're trying to make a color wheel. And so there's all sorts of neat resources that I can download um, and then change to fit my own, my own needs during that, that um, lesson. And then the other cool thing about standards is that I can come over here and I can also go to the C's and I bet you know what I'm getting at, Common Core. I can go to the Common Core and um, I can click here a grade level and I can select my subject and let's say I want to go to Language Arts and then here I can click 
and I can view all these resources that have to do with that first common core standard. So let's say I wanted to do maybe this story elements. I could look at it and it goes through what characters are, setting, and it looks like they can write in on this one. It's not super interactive, but it's a nice presentation that would work well to teach characters. Um, this one, you know, it's predictions and inference. It's got some different, different things. So here, it looks like you can see the answer when you move the little bar. Um, here I could maybe do inference in art where they're looking at the picture. So there's just lots of neat lessons that you can find. Um, as far as the community goes, it's not like Twitter or any of those where you have followers, but I can, can share to the community, and all, most of this stuff is teacher made. There are some uh, resources that are made but professionally also though. And here I could add my own um, file. So for example, I could just click browse here and I can come to my thing and in my, I know that I used um, the smart notebook and radio activity. So here I have my own radial symmetry sorting activity and I can give it a title and then I can explain, you know, what it is. Um, students, they're trying to match or sort pictures based on if they uh, have radial symmetry or not. And then I can put it in my subject and I did this for fourth grade and then I would want to say that it's radial symmetry, symmetry, art, maybe. Um, and then I'm agreeing to share it. And then once I've done that, if I come over here, there's a place that says My Resources. And so now that's going to show up in My Resources and I can decide uh, what I want to share or what I don't want to share. You can see here it's still uploading 70% of my file. If I want to connect a little to the community of Smart Exchange, then I can also click on this Community tab. Um, in the Community tab, there's a blog. I'm still waiting for this to, to load here, my thing that I shared. but. It, well, I might have messed it up by clicking, but you get the idea. On the community tab, it opens you up into a new window where there's a blog you can follow that gives you all sorts of different ways to use Smart Exchange. Um, and if I want to make this actual professional development, I can click on the training tab, which brings me to a set of courses. Uh, some of them are free, but others you have to pay for. And so, um, Using this site, you could do um, PD, but mostly it's a, a form of crowdsourcing. Well, this is the, the page. I preloaded it because it was um, slow. But you can come over here into the marketplace and find courses that you might want to take. So see, you can see some of them are pretty expensive, 75 bucks, And it's got, got those that you can do. But mostly, Smart Exchange is used for you to have uh, crowdsourcing where everybody is sharing lessons they've made and everybody is, is giving resources away to make your job easier and to give these awesome interactive lessons um, that your students can get more out of. And so it's a great way to improve your teaching and make uh, high interest lessons without investing, you know, a huge amount of time. Here's another one where you're playing Connect Four. So if they put in a thing, then they have to get the um, answer correct. And you can see here it explains to you how you're going to do the questions. But here, every time they, when they decide where they want their little, little ball to go, it gives you a question and they have to get it right in order for their, their answer to be true. So just a lot of cool, cool things. Here's another Jeopardy that you can do uh, using this website. So I hope you enjoy it.